Hey everyone, welcome back to the shop. Let's get back to work on the Fokker D7. Now before we begin, buddy of mine wasn't sure, and I didn't go back and look at the video that I got done editing last week, if I told you guys the percentage of nitrate dope and the percentage of thinner. Um, I probably did, unless I go back and take a look, I don't know. You want to start by filling this thing halfway up with nitrate dope, the other half with thinner, and then mix for, I think I said about five minutes, because it takes a while to get both of them blended together. So this stuff was mixed up and you can see that it used to be this full, there we go, uh, before I decided to uh, go ahead and start putting it on the plane. And this thing's 24 ounces. So right now we're down to about 10. So the first two coats I put on, the very first coat just sucks that stuff up and just it pulls it deep into the wood. So the first coat, it you use a lot on the first coat, a lot, about half as much on the second coat. And then as we progress through the third and fourth coat, uh, it's gonna pull even less in. Now what I decided to do today, let me just bring it up in front of you just to kind of give you an idea what I did today without hitting something. Uh, when I came in is I started to go ahead and fill any kind of little seam, any kind of little crack, wherever there was gonna be uh, something that is going to translate, translate uh, into pretty much just pulling the fabric in uh, and then you're looking at it and saying, hey, why is that little line in there? It's because you had a little bit of a gap in there and it pulled the fabric down. Uh, I'm trying to get everything leveled out and that's just with just the old uh, the dry decks, the dap stuff. Uh, you know, goes on pink. When it's not pink anymore, it's uh, when it's white, it's dry. So they go ahead and sand. And with the sun outside today and it's got to be in the mid 80s, uh, it dries real quick. So I've just been kind of taking everything outside, getting it ready to go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna lay down some more uh, nitrate dope on the top of this thing just pretty much to seal in the filler. Um, and I'll just go ahead, do two coats real quick, let it dry outside for about 10 minutes, flip it back over, put two, two coats on just the bottom section. And that should be all the fill I'm gonna need for this because I still have the, the first sand after the nitrate dope uh, then I'm going to be putting on, and it's with probably 240, 320, 240 grit sandpaper. All I want to do is just kind of scuff it and raise the the, the, put the grain a little bit because it's going to go ahead and make the grain stand up. When I put the second, or let's call it the third coat on, it's going to make it rise back up again. Then you're going to crack that down. And then you're going to, when you put the fourth coat on the top of it, you're going to crack it with some 320, 400. And then at that point, you're ready to cover. Now, what I decided to do, let me take you off the stand for this. I decided to just go ahead and leave these like they were. So what I did is I just kind of keep, I came down, tapered them in. So it's gonna taper down and it's still gonna pull tight against the end. So it's not gonna be exactly like the top wing, but on the bottom wing, because we're gonna do that little kind of, that kind of paint job on it. Um, it, we should not have a problem with this. I mean, it's not going to affect anything on the wing. It's the way it looks, but it's going to be the bottom wing. So I'm okay with that. I still have to come in and try to figure out how I want to fix this. This is going to be the fun part. Uh, so I'll be, that is going to be the next thing I'll be doing as soon as I get this wing fully sealed on this side. I'm going to come in and try to figure out how I want to sand that. So I'm going to think about that before I do it. But like I said, this is okay. We're just going to let it fly like this because it's not going to affect anything. And once again, this is not a concourse plane. I'm not gonna show it. I'm not gonna try to win a ribbon on it. So this is pretty much just, uh, let's just call it, it's not gonna be a third place plane. It's gonna be a third place plane. So uh, I just want it to fly and it will fly. All right, where I'm at today is that bottom wing. I still have to do little scallops on the trailing edge of the wing and that I will be doing all off camera. Uh, the rest of it is, done and ready to go. So now it's just two more coats of dope, two more coats of sanding, and that wing will be done. Now, let me show you a couple things else that I did today. 
These little rib caps have been fully replaced and taken care of. There was a little bit of a, I call them a wow. It's, and I still may need a little bit of a touch up. There's a little teeny dot right there. There was a little bit bad where the guy originally sanded it out. It was a low spot. So I just came in with some filler, filled that up, saturated with nitrate dope. So all of that is good. So I may have to touch it up here a little bit, but not too bad. This part back here on this wing, the top wing, is it's completely acceptable. There's a couple little things I may just have to address a little bit, but the rest of that I'm okay with. Of course, the lower wing, which you can see in the back, I still have not taken care of the problems. And there's a bunch of problems. So we'll see how well that comes out when I'm done sanding. And hopefully it's not going to take too long to sand it. Now the fuselage, of course, the, everything is pretty much taken care of up front. I still have to get the side panels that are underneath everything down here. It's the little green things, the side panels. Those will be kind of, sort of, at least taped into position. And then I've got to come through and figure out where they need to be, have the holes drilled through it. There's going to be a hole drilled through here. Don't worry about these two things. That's where I've got balsa. Balsa? No, bamboo skewers going through, holding the firewall in position. So I just have to make a little bit of a cutout here, which is easy. Uh, back here, it's also going to be easy. It's just going to be a little U-shaped thing. And down here, that may be able to sit just the way it is. This one, the same thing, because I can come through and make a mark and try to drill the hole through it. I'm going to try that first. This, I'll make the mark, drill the hole through it, and then I've got to do the same thing up here for the uh, mounting bolts for the front cowling. Those are going to be the fun ones. So i got to try to figure out how well I want to work on this one. Because I should probably put the cowling on, tape it in place. i just got to figure out how I'm going to get to that from the back side. But I think I can figure that one out. Alright, now back here on the tail. These are the holes made for the flying wires on the tail. And what I did was I drilled everything out. I stepped them up. It was supposed to be uh, 7 millimeters from the trailing edge up and 10 from the side in. So I got it close. I went a little bit farther so that it was going to be not directly on that split line. It's closer to 10 millimeters, 10 millimeters. I just figured that's going to be a safer place to put it. So I've got one on that side and it's already got the brass tube through it. One on the other side, already set up, got the brass tube through it. And then the one on the vertical stabilizer, same thing. It was supposed to be 10 from the top, 7 from the side, and it's pretty much almost 10 from the top, 10 from the side. It's just going to make it just a little bit stronger. That's how I think it's going to be a little bit stronger. You can question it, but that's where it's going to be. So, the tail's done. I just have to go back through and sand a couple things. I may have to put a little bit of filler in here because you can see it's a little bit of a step down here. So I'll come through, put some filler here out and some filler here. Eh, it probably doesn't need any, but I'm going to put some through here too, just on the top and up in here. I still have to figure out with the tail how that's going to work with the covering because right now I still have that gap. Um, yeah. I'm going to look at some pictures. If they don't really have that in real life where the gaps are, I'm going to go ahead and cut a wedge and fill those things. That way when I cover the horizontal stabilizer, it's going to be pretty much just the whole top surface on a split. So I can run a split down here and it can wrap up on the vertical stabilizer. So it'll be one piece here wrapped up and then here it'll be overlapped and joined together. And then when the fuselage top comes by, I can actually bring it here and terminate it. Or if I really want to get creative, I've done it before, run a single piece on the top, come back, split it here, run it on one side, run it on the other side, having it wrapped up and then cover this and this. It's going to be entirely up to me how I want to do it. Um, yeah, I got to think about this one. Because I may, I may just have a, an overlap here. Because in real life, this is removable. So I can have it so that there's an overlap or a joint, an apparent joint right here. So I'll think about this one is before I get ready to cover it. But uh, yeah, we're actually sitting pretty darn good. I still want to come on in, get all of this sanded up a little bit better. I don't know how much filler I may have to use down in here. This side's nice and smooth. The other side, it's, I can show it to you if I turn it around. It's a mess. The, uh, the original builder, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. 
Uh, you can't really see it. But he's got a lot of, like up in here, he's got just regular wood glue, where it's just kind of, he put it on there and it's dried. So I'm gonna have to see what I wanna do to come in and sand this. I may just come in with a metal file, cause I got a flat blade metal file, um, and see if I can go ahead and flatten it a little bit more that way. Yeah. So I just, I wanna try to make it easy, cause, in theory, once I cover this with fabric, you're probably not gonna see it anyway, but I just wanna lessen the chance of having it look ugly once it's covered. Cause here I gotta put a little bit of filler down in here where the original builder had a bad sand joint on it. So, but that's no big deal. That's all quick stuff. Cause like this one where he just gouged something. So that's been filled. Uh, this has been filled. It's just gotta be sand a little bit better. So not too much left to do on the fuselage. So while the wings are just kind of sitting right now in idle, until I have to come fix the, the bottom wing. Um, I'm gonna come in, I wanna make sure that all of the, the, the control surfaces I'm happy with. I still have a couple little issues with the ailerons. This one's okay. The bottom ones, he's got these goofy little gaps down here. As you can see it, he didn't, he didn't angle them. So I may just come in with a little piece of filler, just a little wedge, just to slide down in there, just to tidy it up and then sand it. So I'll put wedges in that are gonna stand just a little bit proud um, of where they need to be and just sand it into place. So that's probably what I'll do with those. Cause yeah, he did not do a good job. Or uh, I gotta do a little reference on, I don't think it gets sanded flat, but I'll check out the plans first. Uh, same thing on this side. Um, yeah, I did a couple of them. If you see this end one down here that's put in, I cut that one and it should be about at that angle anyway. Um, it's still debatable. So let me see what I'm going to do with these things because I do have a lot of work within the next couple weeks so I can see if I can get this thing where we're putting covering on it in two weeks. All right, what I'm working on now is I'm going to go ahead and start sanding these little things right here. Those things there. And the way I'm doing it is I'm going the next level up. I decided to, I was trying to find a piece of wood, find a piece of pine, a three quarter inch, anything I can make work and I'm not gonna go to the hardware store and buy a piece because it's just too expensive. So what I did is even though I've got very expensive spruce, I had a piece about yay long. That what I did was I took the plans, took the plans out, went and uh, traced on, not this. All right, now what we're gonna do today, it's just another day. We're gonna go ahead and do this, the little sawtooth rear edge. I've got a couple, you can't really see them yet. These two here are pretty much already sanded in because before I brought you guys in, I wanted to make sure it was gonna work. Now, what I did was I took the top wing because as you saw through the, the other videos, the top wing is pretty good. Although once you start doing the measurements on it, you realize it's not as good as you think it's gonna be. So what I did was I, I just cut a piece of just some light ply, went and kind of match it up really close to the one that looked the best on the top wing and it was pretty darn close so what i did was i just came in just traced the back side of it made a line across the top um, and then i went over a bandsaw just cut it and then sanded down right to the line so what i did is i went back out and everything matched up came in got out the plans and then i matched this to the plans and it needed very little sanding to get it to match the plans so now at least we've got it to the point where we know what kind of arc it's got in it so then what i did is they came on in drew it on a piece of spruce and instead of going over to the band socks, it was very little to take off. I just went ahead and I grabbed uh, my little, it's around here somewhere, my little block plane. And went ahead and spent probably about five minutes uh, just go ahead and shaving this down till we matched the shape, took it over on the belt sander, sanded it down. And then I went out and I put about six layers of nitrate dope on it. Um, one all the way around it just to make it more stable. On the top, I did four of them and did not sand it. So that way I've got something good for the adhesive on the back of the sandpaper to stick to. This is, I think, 180 grit sandpaper. I could be wrong, it could be uh, 120 grit. Um, but regardless, it's a finer sandpaper. I didn't want to put the 36 or 40 grit on it. So at that point, 
what I do is I came on over uh, to the wing and let me kind of tilt you down and show you as I kind of piece through this a little bit and stand up. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in and start sanding it. Taking my time, what I'm trying to do is I'm just eyeballing it because I want these things to be a little bit rounded at the tip. Um, you know, I can go in a little bit tighter with them, but I want to kind of get the measurement between from the front to the rear pretty, pretty close to, to what it's going to be when it's done. So I just come in sand it down close to the line that I drew on this one when I measured everything out. And I'm just going to keep working my way down. And then I could just come across on the end like this and just kind of gently round these tips over. And I'll do a little bit more work as I progress along, but that's the way that they should look. So they're all the same. It does have the squared edge on it a little bit instead of this kind of really wonky, torn apart uh, chunks of wood. However he cut it, I have no idea. So I'm going to go ahead, do this to the bottom wing, do it to the top wing, and then go ahead, put a couple of coats of nitrate dope just on this section back here. And then these wings are pretty close to being done. I just want to come back in like to the wing tips down here. Not happy with the way this is set up. So I'll probably come in sand these things down. And I've got one of my little old permagrits. That's about that kind. And I could just come in and just, I can leave it flat or I can go ahead and just make a little bit of a loop to it. But I just want to get it down so when it crests over the top, it's not going to sit on this ridge. It's going to sit on this rib cap and drop off. So this guy just put them on there. They were too big on the bottom wing and then too small on the top wing. So I may either remove the ones on the top wing or just sister another one in right next to the one that's far too small. One, all right, this is the way they should look. Everything is very nicely rounded out and somewhat symmetrical, heck of a lot better than it used to be. Uh, so I'm really happy with the way this turned out now. So I'm good to go on this. All right, the wings with the exception of just a couple little tweaks, uh, just on the wing tips. Cause like I said, these are standing a little bit too proud. These are a little bit not proud enough. Uh, I'm going to confirm the size of these wedges uh, on the plans. If they're supposed to be this tiny, we're going we're gonna to leave them the way they are. If not, I'm going to bring them back up to about where they should be and get them properly sanded into position. Okay, with the wings pretty much almost ready to cover. Like I said, just a couple little tweaks. Now it's time to get to work on the bottom of the ailerons. Like I said, the tops are pretty good. I mean, I'm okay with this to a point. It's, you know, shoddy workmanship by the first party because I still have to do the uh, the tips on these too because you can see it's just as, uh, yeah, iffy on this too. So my little, this will work on some of them, but it's not going to work on all of them. The, 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 the last one is going to be a little bit tinier, so I'm going to have to just kind of make it work the best I can with what I got on that one. But everything else should be about the same. And of course, this one's rounded out this way. So let me go ahead, let me get some little pieces cut so I can come in and do filler in here. And it might be easier for me just to get some uh, rib material and uh, just go ahead. If I don't knock everything over, don't know if I got, might just be better off to come in. This isn't wide enough. Uh, just go ahead, I'll rip out some more uh, rib caps. And I think I'm just going to go ahead and replace every single one of these things because it's not going to take that much time to get them off. If I even wanted to, I just have to get them close to being completely removed because I could just put something on top of it and then we'll just get everything sanded so that it's flush the way it's supposed to be and up against the rear edge and properly angled for the leading edge. All right, we do have the ailerons done. Everything is nice and tidied up and ready to cover. These are all fully sanded out, ready to cover just as they sit right now. Now the wings, of course, you know, I still have those couple little things I got to work on, those little end caps, um, and then just a little bit of filling in a couple more spots. So that's just going to be part of the, I've got two more coats of dope to put on the whole plane 
Although, even though I did everything on the first coat, which is like on the wings, I did the ribs too. So the whole ribs were completely two coats on everything. So the only thing I have to do now is worry about where the fabric is going to pretty much get attached to it. So uh, what it will be doing was just going to be come in, I'll be doing pretty much a very light sand just to get rid of the fuzzies. Very light sand across the top of everything that's going to need the third and the fourth coat. Uh, so what it's going to be, it's going to be sand everything down very lightly and a lot of times what I use is I use these very very soft, I think it's a 320 uh, sponge. And then the other things I use, if I can find one and dig it out real quick for you. These things are awesome and they do hold dust in them. Uh, these are made by a company called Norton and it's actually, I think it's a triple aught, triple zero steel wool. Uh, so it's, even though it's not steel wool, it acts just like it. Um, so these things work very nicely for just go ahead and getting the little micro fuzzies off. And that way, as soon as you're done with everything, you sand this down, blow it off a little bit of compressed air, and then it's ready to put the fabric on it. So what we'll be doing in the very next video is we will be putting together the guns. Let's see, uh, the little Sten guns. So those will get assembled. I'm going to follow the plans because we may have to do a little bit of a cutout to the top of the uh, cockpit. So how everything's going to set up, I'm going to follow it by plans and hope it's going to work out. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and do that and then I have to put the chin cowling on it and I've got to tape the aluminum side panels on so I can go ahead and um, I've got it from the back side so I'll probably tape them into position and once I'm happy with where they're taped up I'm going to drill out where the screws are going to go through the side. Now the screws themselves are set up just, they're really not holding it on, it's going to be epoxy holding it on but the screws themselves will still be put in there after you epoxy it. What I would prefer to do is probably do it when it's epoxied on there setting up because I'll be using at least probably one hour epoxy. Um, what I'll probably do is uh, I'll put that on, tape it on there, put the screws in there just temporarily to kind of hold everything in a position because I've got to go ahead and put something through. I got to figure out how to go through the fuselage to put little marks on the inside, if I can explain this right, on the inside of the aluminum panels, and that's where I have to drill the holes through for the uh, cabane struts. Uh, nothing for the landing gear, uh, but just pretty much the cabane struts and the front cowling screws that just, you know, pretty much hold the whole cowl to the front of the fuselage. So let's just go ahead. We're going to call this a video, and I'll see you guys next time back down in the shop.